गुड इवनिंग एवरीबाडी दिस इज संगीता सक्सेना एडिटर एविएशन एंड डिफेंस यूनिवर्स गेटिंग यू लाइव फ्रॉम डी एस सी आई लंडन एंड हियर वी आर एट द इंडिया पवेलियन एंड वी हैव विद अस अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग प्रोडक्ट विद अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग नेम एंड इन एडिशन टू दैट द मैन हु इज द को फाउंडर अलॉन्ग विद अस वी आर हियर एट द बूथ ऑफ अकीरो प्रोटेक and we have with us madhu ram murthy who is the director welcome madhu to adu's chat room thank you wonderful to have you here thank and you. since we are meeting at dsei what is the aim a big export market or uh, getting the world to know you exist nothing less than the global market is our objective right now uh, we are a made in india make in india product we started during the covid time in india we set it up about 3 years back or so in india and what we do we are the only ones in the country to do that. there's nobody else in india who does that so we leverage the entire make in india initiative and we want to make something uh, that the indian companies have been importing hundreds of crores in the last few years and we decided it's high time we actually make it in india so we set about doing it so what we do right now is we make all the raw materials that go into our work bulletproof jackets body armor vehicle armor helicopter armor for everything the key raw materials have been imported all these years from outside and we manufacture them in bangalore that's wonderful but that's a real example of make in india and atmanirbhar bharat ha now uh, madhu tell me one thing who are your indian customers so all our customers not just in anywhere in the world are companies that buy from us they convert into a product so we sell materials right we make like a fabric roll or whatever it is so our companies our our, our customers they buy the material from us they convert it into a visible product like a bulletproof jacket or a helmet or a vehicle armor kit or helicopter armor or whatever and then their customer is the government typically the military or the police or law enforcement right so so we, we typically have two to three customers in many countries and uh, these are usually the defense contractors they would buy from us convert into a product they would go bid in some of the tenders for the military or the police or whatever and then they will then sell that's how it works yeah because in india we do have a very major indigenous industry with mkus and npps of the world who are doing it and just wanted to understand from you that is it a market which is totally export driven or is it a domestic market also for you well uh, there is certainly a domestic component to it but whatever we are making is with the world view in mind uh i certainly for one have been operating in the international market for the last 25 years now uh i've been i've been traveling around all over the globe for this very specific market since 1995 uh my very first job i was head of sales and marketing uh, for my ex employer for the south american market we used to travel to chile brazil colombia argentina mexico and central america and everywhere that's how i started and later on in the us and canada and later on in europe and asia pack so i understand this market granularly everywhere and i have this connect with customers in different parts of the world and i saw a gap in the market the gap was either you had a couple of the big western companies big marquee names that were supplying to the market or we had the cheaper chinese companies that were supporting there's nobody else so we said you know what there is an opportunity here where we make a product that uh, it's made in india nothing like it for the indian market and uh, we certainly have credibility when it comes to the global market space people don't view you the same as like a cheap chinese product or whatever and uh, that's what we bring to the table i mean that's really wonderful actually you know so uh, tell me one thing uh, the product which you manufacture uh, has everything in it in it or are you buying something from uh, abroad or is it a totally okay. the the raw material for what we do is what we call as a high performance fiber it is a very super strong material unfortunately nobody makes them in india so every raw material uh, the fibers we have to buy from outside the country uh, the plan is if things go per plan some day we will start manufacturing even those yarns in india too. that's a plan that's very nice actually and uh, you know when we talk about an export market so which continents are at the moment your customers 
today, for example, at DSCI, we've had non-stop meetings since morning. Uh, we've had interest from because it's DSCI, mostly the European companies right now, mostly. But we've been supplying a lot of samples and getting us products qualified in South America to start off with. We are doing it in many parts of Asia as well. And uh, the US, there have been some issues, uh, but hopefully we'll get to the US market at some stage. Yes. And uh, what about Africa? Not quite. Not yet. We're not there yet. Because Africa is a market it's which a is growing, market. It's growing a market. high growth region for most of the We don't industry. have the bandwidth right now to huh. get into that market, but hopefully we'll get to that some so what is actually the status at the moment? At the moment you are supplying to uh, which which countries? At the moment we are supplying, I want to say, uh, commercially to about uh, four countries maybe, four or four five countries. countries. But we, have, uh, we are going through testing, validation, certification with about 15 countries right now. Wonderful. That's yeah. that's a great thing to happen. Yeah. So uh, by the time uh, you get all this testing and validation gets over, and you expect some more to join. I'm hoping by next year, if we do the interview again, I'm hoping that our count would have increased and we would have supplied to a few more countries. Absolutely. Yeah. And tell me one thing that if, as in when the business in increases, orders become bigger, are your facilities uh, sufficient enough or you'll have to create some more to fulfill the commitment? So, A, we have a lot of space in the facility to expand and scale up, number one. And number two, we did not start with a small R&D or a pilot line. We started off with production in mind. So, we have fairly good capacity right now uh, to cater to the demand. But if, if we need to expand, we will. They will. Right. And uh, what is what is basically the since we are at DSCI, what is basically your uh, export plan for Europe? Uh, it's still evolving as we speak. Uh, so today and yesterday, for example, a lot of European companies have approached us. So we've been drawing a sampling plan. We're going to have uh, final meetings tomorrow. Get them samples. The entire cycle takes three to six months. For them to get the samples, get them tested, qualify, certify, and then once they win a tender, they will come to us. So that's the plan. But the plan is to export everything from India on a need-to basis. Uh, long term, if business really scales up the way we envisage it to, long term we might think of setting up like a warehouse in Europe where it's easier to ship up. But that's a long term thing, but not today. No, I really wish you all the best for it. Thank you. And I'm sure that when next year we meet at Euro Saturday, you'll have a lot more to tell us. Let's hope so. Thank you so much, Thank Madhu. You. It Thank was you. wonderful speaking with you. Thank you.